Mike and Patrick Downey, thank you for coming in. Thank you for having us. It's a pleasure. Um, you just lost your brother a couple of days ago. You could have waited to talk to us. So there's obviously something you wanted Canadians to hear right now. <laughs> Mike, what is it? Well, firstly, thank you. Um, the outpouring has just been, it's been a beautiful tidal wave of emotion and uh, we've felt it. And, you know, I think if we could harness part of that and keep people moving in the direction that Gord, you know, started moving in himself uh, towards reconciliation, um, that would be something really positive, um, you know, to come out of um, you know, the tragic loss of, of um, you know, a great guy who had a lot more to give. Um, so I am hoping that, you know, we can keep um, the conversation, um, you know, on a national level uh, about how to, how we can figure out how to bring these two solitudes together, Indigenous and non-Indigenous people, and, and follow, the, um, follow the excellent lead that Gord provided for us. So Patrick, how can we do that? Um, well, really, uh, you know, it's obviously very fresh and um, you know, our whole family is feeling pretty tender at this point, but it's not too much unlike, um, you know, that last show uh, in Kingston where Gord sort of suddenly realized uh, he had this huge audience and he could say something and, and actually take advantage of the attention and, and put it to work. And, uh, you know, it's not an easy situation to come out in this particular time to, to speak about this publicly. And, um, but we'd be remiss if we didn't take advantage of the attention that he's getting uh, to, do, to do some actual work, to actually put it into something. Well, let's do it. Mike, tell me about the Cheney Winjack Gordowney Fund. Well, Tom, we started it last year. Um, it really came out um, as a result of our trip um, that Patrick and Gord and I and, and some friends took up to uh, a Goki post to meet the Wenjacks and to show them all the secret path pieces, Gord's record, Jeff Lemire and Gord's graphic novel, and the first uh, part of the animated film to ask the family for their blessing and, um, well, really to meet them for the first time. I had, had been talking to Pearl ever since Gord went into the studio to record the songs, which was way back, like four years ago. But... Um, this was our first meeting, and it was a powerful experience uh, for all of us. And, you know, we were uh, coming home, and I was thinking how... And while we were up there, The Secret Path had been announced, it had been released, uh, that a new project from Gord was coming out, and it really caught fire. You could just see it spread right across I the remember, country yeah. from yeah. way up there. Yeah. And um, so, you know, on the way home... Uh, you know, we were talking and I said, you know, there's got to be a way. This is going to blow up big. You could feel it. It was still a month away. It was going to blow up pretty big. People were going to, we we're going to get people's attention from Gord. Um, and it was just such a beautiful project. But, you know, I, the question was, how do we keep that going? And that's really where the idea of the fund came from, that there's got to be a way to keep this energy, to keep this sort of awakening uh, alive. So that's when we started the fund. And, and that was a year ago. And since then, we've been taking the funds that Canadians generously um, donated, and it came from everywhere, thousands and thousands of people, classrooms. We get letters. We get artwork of Chani on the tracks, of Gord on the tracks. You cannot believe what some of these kids are doing. Beautiful. It's beautiful. And so we... Um, uh, with the fund, we are supporting the Truth and Reconciliation Center. There, Gord has a, there's a Gord Downey Trust within there that is, um, we are uh, diverting funds towards them because they are going to try to find more of these kids who never made it home. There's unmarked graves surrounding all these residential schools, which are now gone. There's still grave sites around many of these places, and we want to support Rye Moran, the Truth and Reconciliation Center, to try and find these children. They still have families. Um, that's one. Second is is education. We've um, we've got forty thousand teachers in this country using secret, that we know of using Secret Path in their classroom. We want to support them. Um, we have lesson plans for them to share. They're sharing with each other, but we're we're trying to um, 
continue to uh, to support that. And lastly, we uh, are giving out these small grants to people that have an idea of an act of reconciliation. They have an Indigenous uh, partner, and um, we plant. We're trying to plant many of these small seeds, just like startup money. But we want to validate. You know, it has to be something that I think there's a few small criteria, but it really is um, about action. Mm -hmm. You know, you've got awareness, education, and then the action. And so we want to, we want to provide some grease to lubricate that kind of thing, just because we want people to get involved. Don't want to leave it up, you know, to the government. It's not the kind of thing you throw money at, you know, in terms of reconciliation. I think it's the kind of thing you get involved with, mm -hmm. and then relationships start, mm -hmm. and then everything changes. I mean, you, you you say it's not the kind of thing you want to entrust necessarily with the government. You want to make sure people are, are doing their thing. It reminds me of what Gord said at that final concert, what ended up being the final concert in Kingston, mm -hmm. and the prime minister was sitting right there. And Gord said, you know, I think this is the guy. I think this is the guy who can do it. Mm -hmm. And that was a that was a, a real call to task in some ways. That Gord, he talked about that later. He realized he had the eyes of the country watching him, and he realized he could say whatever he wanted, and he knew what he wanted to say. H how's that been going since then in your mind? You know, when I say, you know, um, don't leave it to the government, there's a huge role for the government to play. Yeah. I mean, we're talking about fixing, you know, uh, getting these communities off their boil water advisories and things like that. So there, there is a huge, and bringing education funding, um, you know, bring it up to levels that, that the rest of our children, you know, uh, enjoy across the country. So there's a huge role for government to play. My point is that um, there's a role for every Canadian to mm -hmm. play. Because quite frankly, I, I think those are enormous problems that are going to take a long time and are going to take an incredible amount of resources, funds mm -hmm. to fix. We're also talking, you know, there's other areas. Um, it has to do with, you know, mineral rights or you name it. There's a lot of things that have to be worked out. But I think for that to move forward, all Canadians need to just know a little bit more mm -hmm. about... Um, uh, they need to know a little bit more about the day-to-day -day of, of Indigenous people. And then I think if that's the case then that becomes, there's a level of actionability there, I think, for the government. So then they, whatever it is that they're trying to do, they know they have to keep trying to do that. So, so Patrick, he also said that from the stage. He said, you're going to do it. He pointed at everyone in the audience. He mm -hmm. said, you're going to do it, to, to echo what Mike was saying. Each and every one of you is going to do it. Mm -hmm. So what can, what can ordinary Canadians do today to fulfill that dream of Gord's? Well, um, I think, like Mike said, you... You can educate yourself. Um, you can get involved in small ways. You can, you know, if you really wanted to, you know, you, I think a lot of people are hurting, grieving. I know we are. Um, and, and maybe put some of that into action, you know. Um, you can spectate. But in this situation, you you might be better just to be a little bit of an actor, mm -hmm. and uh, that's what they can do. In, in terms of concrete things, can they go to a website? Can they go to your? Yeah, yeah, we do. Um, uh, on our website, um, we've got a um, few different resources, and and one of them is the application form to to sign up um, to apply for for a, a micro grant, um, and. Listen, there's a, lot of, there's a lot of ways to get involved, and there's a lot of great uh, organizations out there waiting, um, you know, for the average Canadian to, uh, to get on board. Um, you know, I think the most important thing that, that, w that we can do, help try to do, is I think Gord inspired a lot of people. We would, just, we would like to inspire them to act we have a light touch. We're not, we're not building a rocket ship to go to space. We want to inspire people to act. And you know, Tom, it, it could be, you know, read an indigenous author, like wherever, you know, wherever you need to start, get started if you can. It's, it's, it's really amazing that you, through the grief that you guys are experiencing, which I, I know is, is so deep, that you 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 want to use it, you want to use this moment and kind of push away your 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 personal grief and and 
and try to do something with it, Patrick? Well, um, that's truly honoring God. And that's, that's what we're here doing. What's it, what's it like knowing that the, because mourning a family member, like I know it, we were talking about this before we turned on the microphone, mm. is a very private thing. Mm. What's it been like having the country sort of mourn with you? Um, well, we had a bit of a dry run with this back um, when when it got announced right. that he had he had uh, incurable cancer, and we had known since the uh, well uh, since the fall of two thousand fifteen. We had known about six months prior, and uh, when the announcement came out, um, you know, we had to shelter ourselves a lot from. Uh, the public reaction, it just felt the weight of an entire country. Um, so it kind of it dredged it all up again. We had kind of, re- you know, been a little bit resolved and started to, you know, draw strength to sort of try to help Gord get, get through it. But then there was this whole weight of uh, uh, just an entire country, I guess. So that happened again. And we were we were a little bit more prepared for it, but I will say, yeah, it it compounds the the grief when you know so many other people are grieving, and just the way it, you know when you see the finality of it, and, and some of the things in the you know the front pages of all the papers and the ticker tapes and stuff, it it's it's uh, this country weighs a lot, <laughs> <laughs> and. Uh, you know, we're not we're not trying to say we're holding it up, but you know, we're we're not. <laughs> <laughs> but we can. Uh, I think uh, you know, many hands uh, make lighter lighter work. I think you're seeing a lot of people share their story of Gord. Mm. I just want to go somewhere happier just for a second mm-hmm. because we've mm-hmm. only known Gord. I've only known Gord in his adult life. Mm-hmm. You guys knew Gord when he was a kid. Mm-hmm. Can you give me a story about childhood gourd that you guys are telling these days as you remember him? Something that I know you started smiling as soon as I said that. I? <laughs> uh, I have to do a quick <clears throat> self edit. Uh, you know, uh, Gord was, uh, I do have a story for you. I'll tell you a story. Yeah. Um, Gord was in his first year of minor hockey, and we used to go to this rink called Center 70, built in 1970, of course, and it was state of the art. Um, and we were coming home at the end of a season, last game, Gord's team was in the finals. And Gord was a defenseman, I think, so in his first year of hockey, maybe. Before he became a goalie. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So anyway, they lost the game. And Gord, it, we're in the car, and it's Patrick and Gord and, and Dad, and he's, he's pissed off. The goalie (laughs) let them down, right? And they had this team, and they had had a great season, and they lost the final game. And um, and I remember a conversation along the lines of, you know, hey, don't blame the goalie, you know, you know, it's the older brother, you know, the wiser older brother. Don't don't blame the goalie, Gordon. Gordon's like, next year I'm going to be the goalie, and I (laughs) laughed, (laughs) and I laughed, because Gordon wasn't a great skater. He was a big, he was a lanky guy, right? They, you know, and he was he was young. He was probably seven or. Maybe eight. Did and you say he wasn't a great skater? Or not say? that first year. Oh, okay. And he was going in the net. My, my point being, you're, you're going to, he became a better skater. Don't, don't get me wrong. <laughs> but he, uh, so anyway, so I laughed and I was like, oh, this will be interesting. So the next September comes and I'll never forget, he comes home from the first practice with those brand new pads because they supply the equipment and we've been playing, you know, road hockey, you know, like on the ice pads up and down the street for years. And all of a sudden we got a full set of gold equipment. So then it kind of dawned on me, this is a good thing. That season, Gord got 15 shutouts and they (laughs) won the center 70 minor Adam championship. And I got to tell you, he was good. And that's my Gordy story. (laughs) Patrick, any stories coming to mind for you today? Uh, no, you know, I'm kind of, I'm sort of drawing a blank. I know I'll have 1,500 of them when I when I leave here, but I, uh, Tom, I'm I'm totally drawn drawn a blank. I, yeah. Uh, um, 
uh, my head is kind of swimming. Of course it is. Yeah. Was he was he was he always good with words? Yeah. Or as my mum would say, he was always good with his pen. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Around the house, he was. Yeah, he always. Yeah. Because even when I spoke to him, he he had this really beautiful way of speaking. Yeah. Even very poetic, you know. Even in, even in his in his casual day to day conversation. Yeah. Well, I. Um, you know, we've been together very intimately for the last uh, two years, and living together. And uh, you know, I wrote a lot of little little gems down, but um, the one that keeps coming back to me you know, in terms of the, the context of this, because he was thanking me a lot of kind of for helping him through all this. It was it was a big uh, burden. Um, you know, he felt that he was kind of a burden, and that's a big part of somebody who's sick. Yeah, they apologize. And I, you know, we, we got that ironed out, but, you know, I would, hey, you know, he would really do it um, f for not just a family of others. He, you know, I learned all of what I did for Gord um, from him. He is a very dutiful man. And um, he r would just say things, you know, um, often r randomly, you know, in the last little while. And uh, I found something in my date book the other day and that he'd say, he says, there's no higher power than helping people. And I don't know when he discovered that or maybe that's what he discovered in all of this, but... Um, that's my story. He, um, I, I think what, what I've been trying to remember, you know, in, in, in the talking that I've, like, I've been asked to do about his, about his passing, which hasn't been easy for me. But the one thing that I've been trying to remember is that we lost a, like an icon. We lost a singer. We lost a musician. We lost a, a, a guide. You guys lost a brother. And I, I, I can't begin to tell you how sorry I am just for that, for that just personal loss. Thank you. I, I just have a, just a couple more questions, sure. and you've been very generous. I think a lot of us couldn't get over that he was doing so much in this past year, that he was going out on tour with the Tragically Hip, that he was putting off the Secret Path concerts, that he was like leading the charge and reconciliation with the Downey and the Winjack Fund. As his family, as the people who knew him best, where did that strength come from? Um, from him. I mean, I, I, we're emotional people, and and um, anybody that knows us would probably say that. Um, but you know, to watch, um, you know, I was uh, on tour with 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 the hip when they did their last thing and, and some of those long extended ovations where Gord would just stand out there and, and wave, I guess, wave goodbye. I think, you know, just showing his gratitude. Um, I couldn't get over how strong he was. And I guess I didn't really know he was that strong because I'm, you know, I'm baby. He dubbed me baby cry cry. And uh, <laughs> I can't, you know, I uh, <laughs> was a long time. I cry, uh, <laughs> you know. I, I watched Marley and me on a plane without the sound, and I bawled my eyes out. <laughs> you know, I I cry at weddings. I don't even know the people that are uh, getting married. But he, he is strong, and I don't. I honestly don't know. You know, my dad was a very uh, sort of stoic dude, hmm. and um, good old Edgar, and. Uh, Maybe that's where it comes from. I think um, before we turn on the microphones, I was telling you guys about my father who had died from a very similar um, condition. Mm -hmm. And there are moments, so many of them, where all I want to do is call him. <laughs> you know, something happens. You see something, you live through something, all you want to do is call him and, and tell him about it. Or when you're in in the nighttime, you're lying down in bed, and and you just all you want to do is talk to him about the day. Mike, is there any, is there anything you'd say to him right now? Anything I'd say to Gord? Yeah. You know, um, I guess one of the um, what comes along with uh, 
you know, battling an illness for that amount of time, you do get opportunities to, you know, have that conversation. To have the conversations. Yeah. So we definitely had a few of those conversations and um but I know what you mean and I, I think one of the things I, I, that will come up soon um you know just thinking oh I, I'll sh- I'd love to share that with Gord what personally um I'm really going to miss is have is a, a witness to a big chunk of my life Gord had a great memory he had a there's a lot of things that happened in those, you know, those childhood days. And I always got such a thrill out of talking about, you know, just going back and forth on, it could have been almost anything, you know, a high school dance or somebody's girlfriend or something, you know, that just was a part of the family lore or or maybe just something that only the two of you experienced. Mm. And I think that's what I'm I'm going to miss because I I really like going to those places. We we went to those a couple of those places over the last you know six months or so. We had a couple of really good, like almost recreating the you know blow by blow you know um, something that something that happened. And uh, I'm going to miss that. I'm, I you know I've got a pretty good memory. I'm going to hang on to all of it, but it's a little bit more fun when you can share it with somebody who was there too. So. Um, Patrick, if, if you could talk to Gord, what would you say? Uh, I'd say I'm, I'm wearing your socks today. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I didn't ask first, but uh, I thought they might bring me some luck and some strength. Which the, ones, Patty? Uh, the, the lucky uh, shamrock ones that, that you gave him. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I, want to, I just want to reiterate what I said before, that we lost a, a musician, we lost a guide, we lost an icon. You're seeing all these words. We, we know you lost a family member and you have our deepest condolences here. And Patrick and, and Mike, I hope you know that you, the, the, the whole country is behind you mm. and the whole country is mourning with you. Mm. Oh. Thank you. Thank you for coming Thanks, in. Uh, Thanks, Tom. Thanks, Tom.